Hi, loves. So we're in the second month of her mystery school, the month of communion, and I've been wanting to pull out some kind of core teaching or core principle from each month to share. And I thought communion goes through communion with the world soul, then the communion between the heart and womb, and then communion with other, etc. I thought I was going to be talking about going more deeply into the the marriage or the union between heart and womb. However, what's been happening in the school with the women who are in the school and in the webinars and in the group is a lot of um, concern, question, exploration, and discussion around sex. And that actually seems to be where the juice is. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. I wanted to share some time with you around sexuality, female sexuality, uh, specifically, um, it come it's coming in response to um, there's been a lot in the thread. There's been a lot in the connection that's happening between the women that is this exploration that sometimes goes into concern about um, the right use, the right experience of female sexuality, how to approach. A relationship to your own sexuality as a woman, um, even things as broad and as more generalized as, um, you know, there are certain esoteric traditions or even non-esoteric traditions that focus on orgasmic retention, um, lifting sexual energy, um, kind of holding it as something to be transmuted. Um, there's just been such a rich terrain of awakenings, concerns, possibilities, and discussion that I kind of had to speak to it, and I was asked to speak to it more directly as how do I and how does her mystery school hold sexuality? Because um, there are a lot of, we don't address, there are moments when we address sexuality specifically, and there is a whole month, next month actually, where we go into Shakti and the female sexual current and woman is paradise. But for the most part, the school is much, much broader than that and um, kind of approaches sexuality indirectly, right? By coming into a much fuller dimensionality of woman as we were created to be, and then bringing that to whatever our experience of sexuality is. However, so I've never, I've never really kind of laid it out and it felt important partly because you know whenever whenever there's any movement or a school or a tradition anything there are always undercurrents right there are always valued undercurrents or underpinnings that will then permeate through the way that the whole offering exists and her mystery school is a very inclusive one. There is no right and wrong necessarily. It's not, there isn't a dogma to it, but there is the influence of my own convictions and my experience of sexuality and how I hold female sexuality. So this is what I'm going to do today with you. What we're going to do is I'm just going to go through, I had to, well, I didn't have to. My response was to write a big long post about it and to break it down into, it ended up being like eight um kind of fundamental approaches to female sexuality that the school holds and that I uphold and that I invite you to consider as you're exploring your own sexuality. So, and where we're coming from here is the very important and crucial relationship between you and your own sexuality. How do you hold her? How do you relate to her? So it's not so much about how are you bringing that to others or what is the culture at large's or your religion's view, this is your, what about your relationship to the sexual current that lives inside of you? How has it been impacted? How are you tending it? How are you holding her? And then that will reflect out into the way that you share that part of yourself with others. Um, so let's go through it. I thought I would just go through, read the different points, and then um, maybe talk about them a little bit. So the first one is... No one outside of you, and I'm, I am actually reading these, no one outside of you knows what you should do with your sexuality, how you should hold her. She is a mystery, and she rises from the ancient place before time that created life and sustains love 
and union. So, you know, what I'm aware of is that not only in religion, but also in yogic tradition, also in esoteric traditions, also in culture, there are so many perspectives on what you should do with your sexuality. And you, but nobody knows what that actually is. Even only you do. She's for you. Right, So the way that I hold sexuality, female sexuality, first and foremost, is as a mystery to be known, a mystery to be revealed to ourselves, and a mystery that we've shared with all women and with all of life, actually, since the beginning of time. So my encouragement to start off with is to recognize that although there is a lot of cultural, religious, spiritual, personal trapping around sexuality... What she is in her essence is beyond all of that. And if you really want to know her, finding a way to connect with her directly as she lives and moves through you is would be my, my recommendation and what the school fosters, a, an experience of revelation to yourself of what your, actual, what your sexuality actually is, what she was created to be, how she thrives and how she is in integrity. Okay, number two. Woman in general and the female sexual current and the power that it carries through women has been so vilified, controlled, feared, and misunderstood for so long that most traditions, even esoteric ones, even ancient ones, have gaps in their wholeness. Be very cautious about traditions that source from a root that excluded women or the broader female experience, even if they now include women. Not because men are bad, or there's no wisdom there, it just isn't complete. And if you look towards breaks in integrity that come in those traditions, they almost invariably center around sexuality and the misuse of sexual charisma or power. These breaks in integrity in such traditions, which I've been part of and witness to for two decades now, are very confusing and can be deeply damaging. So, again, most of these things, just so you know, are in response to different specific points that were coming up in the women that I feel represent actually what's going on inside of a lot of women. Um, what this speaks to is that without without going into some story or getting really hung up on oppression, brutality, and the interruption of female lineage, it is important to name it. And it's very important to name it around the experience of female sexuality because at this point, most of our traditions, even our spiritual traditions, especially our political traditions, especially our cultural, like there's all basically... We have inherited a world which on most levels excluded the female body, the female form, female experience of divinity from the creation of it. So be really cautious. You know, one of my students the other day informed me because she's she is a practitioner, a deep practitioner of yoga, that yoga was actually created based on young boys' bodies and how they move. <laughs> So it's like, of course, there's beauty and amazement in yoga, but to recognize that even traditions, spiritual and otherwise, embodiment that you might be getting so much out of when you notice that it comes to a place where it can't meet you, or you're starting to feel a little closed in by it, or if there are proscriptions around your sexuality or your female form, your, your experience of your subtlety and your awakening... You don't have to you don't have to do much about it. You don't have to get angry or resistant or give way. Just notice and just the truth is women were excluded from the creation of most things that we're living inside of and that means that the inherent knowing of the female body the, the knowing from the inside of how female sexual current moves in all the ways, how the female body responds, which is a mirror of how female being and how a whole aspect of incarnated divinity is, that was excluded. 
So there, it's quite likely that you're going to experience, like you're going to come to interesting glass ceilings, things that feel like hypocrisy or feel limiting. And it's okay to just bow out of that and acknowledge that no tradition is ever complete. And most of our traditions right now are not complete, especially in the place where women would have been and f deep female knowing would have been included. So um, just to validate that in you, if you're inside of a tra tradition that you love and isn't quite meeting you all the way, that's um, if you're inside of a tradition that you really don't like, that's holding you back or that is attempting to control or described to you your own experience of yourself that it's okay to um, not throw out the baby with the bathwater, but include yourself as a woman your experience as a woman as an addition know that you know you're bringing something to it that's going to add a whole bunch of dimension to it and going to change things because this was not included at the root of it at the root of most things except for some really awesome kind of more hidden, more um, Taoist and other traditions. Um, okay, number three. You can't really fuck this one up. And I really actually mean that, and I will get into it a little bit more, but it's an exploration. Partly because it's always an exploration, partly because we're in a long-term process of recovery and redemption that orphaned us from the true and natural holiness of female sexuality and male sexuality, for that matter, the gift of pleasure, the arts of union. If you're going to look outside of yourself for practices, inspiration, ideas, or guidance, please, please, please keep your eyes wide open for hypocrisy or very subtle power plays that make you feel like you can't trust your natural unfoldment. This is all here for you, not the other way around. So, okay, obviously, can you make mistakes? Can you get yourself in tough situations? Yeah, yes. But, and that's actually a part of the unfoldment of sexuality, the learning of it, the understanding of it, the coming to know it, right? So when I say you can't really fuck this one up, I really don't think you can. It's not really meant to, in a way, it's not meant to do that. The journey of fully incarnating and embracing sexuality is not a linear one and it's not prescripted and it's not dogmatic and normally we end up in terrain that's confusing where we have to find ourselves where we lose ourselves it's this is the journey often and that doesn't mean that you're screwing it up that means that's that's the journey especially now because most of us are coming into a fullness of embodiment, even just a desire to know ourselves, claim and be ourselves that we don't, there's no modeling for. We are talking about, in some cases and some levels, thousands of years of interruption between just natural upwelling female sexuality and the, the harmony and the the natural wisdom that it has and so many incarnations and ways in which it's been controlled or vilified or destroyed or uh, right so there's a when I say you can't fuck it up I just mean be essentially be gentle with yourself it's like this is a whole process of redemption that we're in and recovery it's going to have a natural possibly steep learning curve and we really need each other in it as women I think especially because there's so much that we're going to encounter and experience that doesn't seem to have any that may not seem to be validated or spoken to or included in our world and but that can feel so deep and so big and so true on the inside and it is something that a lot of women share. We just, it's not really, it's not part of our overculture. So um, have an awareness that there is a deep rightness to your sexuality and it didn't actually go anywhere. It, the deep rightness of your sexuality right now is what's going to keep moving you towards opening into more and more integrity around your sexuality and rediscovering what that even means, whether or not it's been modeled for you anywhere. And then this piece about 
you know, finding practices. I, I have gotten a lot from, at times, joining with uh, practices of cultivation of my sexuality, practices, and I mean, well, actually, no, way more than at times, restoration of virginity, cultivation of residency in my body, cultivation of my sexual fire, my ovarian presence, the womb. I mean, there's so many practices. Those are just the ones that I've loved. You know, there's a huge spectrum of practices, inspiration, ideas, ways of holding your sexuality that you might turn to at different times to hold you, to help you cultivate something um, that resonate with you. And that's awesome. And the, the place I think to watch is when that goes from being something that's helping you return you to yourself and moves into something that's taking you away from yourself into a sense that you can't just trust your natural unfoldment, right? The practices also are an offering. Your sexuality, the current of life, the current of the mystery that moves through you, is that's where the authenticity is. She is forever beyond all practices. They can create, uh, they can foster understanding, deeper connection. They can foster an architecture of support around the way that you encounter that. But at the end of the day, if they're pulling you away from an actual encounter with the truth and the mystery that lives inside of you and will tell you what to do in your moment, in your life, then I would say just be a little careful with that. Especially if it starts to pull you into a place where all of a sudden, like, it's not okay to do something from the outside. True embrace and empowerment in your sexuality means that you're close enough to her to make discerning decisions for yourself based on the moments that present themselves with, with the sense of the truth as it arises in you. It's a bit of a leap of faith. You have to cultivate the sense of intimacy and connection with that aspect of you, this trust and the deep listening. Because if you come to your sexuality as a revelation for yourself, as something that is alive and that will show you more than you could ever imagine, you have to let practices and ideas and things like that be um, foundations, be places of rest or, or mm, structure that you're then willing to kind of leap off out of into the, the full embrace of the mystery of yourself and how you're going to unfold. And that's where deep passion and a true sense of direct connection to divinity, to yourself, toward the ancient power that's in you, your discernment, all these things, that's where that can really um, become alive and become a, a state of residency, a state of your being that you don't lose, that no one can give you and no one can take away or change. Um, okay, number four, your sexual current is your own and you and only you can cultivate enough intimacy with her to know how she will unfold. Trust her, listen to her, follow her and tend her, learn from her directly with all the practices, including the ones in this school, pay attention to the fruits of the practice in you. Are you gathering greater trust and intimacy with yourself and with the one who made and sustains you? So that's pretty straightforward. It's just, again, this truth that sexuality, your sexuality is is yours and there there is an intimacy that only you could ever have with her because she's unlike anything else and she's uprising in you every moment and by sexuality we'll get into this later i don't mean like explicit sexuality i mean your passion for life your desire your um calling your longing all the things that make your destiny right so when you wonder why sexual sexuality isn't thriving or clear for you or sexual relationships are complicated and confusing or unsatisfying, remember that the first relationship is between you and her. It is for you to bring intimacy and knowing of your own sexual current, your sexual being to 
the relationships that you have to your life, to your boundaries. And there are, there are ways, there are practices, there are support systems for fostering that, especially if it's something that you've felt orphaned from or that feels like a dangerous terrain for you for any reason or a, a very vulnerable terrain. So again, and that's what practices are for. That's what things like her mystery school or things like, you know, there's, there's other, there's all these ways, right? You'll be called to what you're called to that will hold you while you foster a real relationship and a recovery of yourself, especially sexually, given how sensitive, vulnerable and powerful that is. So, um, but this knowing this deep belief, no matter what has happened, no matter what you see around you, just holding always a kernel of a deep belief and a deep knowing that your sexual current is for you. That's the ultimate truth. She nourishes you. She keeps life, longing, desire, passion, moving through you, love, moving through you, and a knowing of what you are really created to be. So she's a holy gift to you, far beyond the simple ecstasy of having a sexual experience. She's a, she's a holy gift that actually weaves you in with your own soul and the the movement of your own soul in the world um okay number five if you're concerned about energetic psychic safety and integrity which was a big i felt like a big deal coming up in the group there was a lot of wonderment of like what's safe what's not as you're opening to more of an exploration and an intimacy with your own sexuality, is there a way to go wrong? Like, can you do the wrong thing? Can you... Anyway, if you're concerned about energetic or psychic safety and integrity, just stay with the fundamental vow. This is a very simple version of what could be a very complicated terrain. The fundamental vow. I steward this power for the good of all and in harm to none. So if you have concern about, especially if you're opening to your sexuality and there's more of it and you are, and it can be, a, it can be a force to be reckoned with to just, okay, what would it mean to steward this power? I.e. you don't own it, you steward it. It's moving through you to recognize the gift that it is to steward this power, recognize that it's a power for the good of all and harm to none. That's where you come into a relational field and things can actually be really simple. Like, is this creating harm? Then change what you're doing. You know, it's like you don't, you don't have to hold back. You don't have to close down. You can allow your sexuality to flower. And yeah, is it going to become magnetic? For sure. Is it going to have a lot of power to it? And, and whether or not some of you are going to be celibate and you're still, you know, your sexual current is still very alive inside of you. It creates magnetism, it creates influence, it creates beauty and power and substance in you. It is something to reckon with because it will also activate desire. It will activate, um, it will activate, you know, it will activate longings in you that then you're going to have to find a way to be with in a way that A, doesn't make you feel frustrated and upset and also doesn't pull in the wrong things, right? So there's... It's true. If you don't like keep it shut down and cut off, I mean, obviously that has its own consequences. The consequences of opening your sexuality and starting to let her reveal herself to you is that you are going to have to learn how to stay with the vow of harm to none, good for all. How are you going to steward this power? It goes on to say, it's not direct relationship to your sexuality that will bring you the integrity to keep that vow. And that is a really important thing. It's self-knowledge, poise, deep listening, purification of your heart, and wisdom that will help you have the integrity to keep that vow. The sexual current herself is a force, a nectar, and a substance. The vessel you carry her in, i.e. what you... Ha what you how you hold and cultivate your own integrity is what will shape her expression and her integrity. So the sexual current is a wild, untamed thing. That's the beauty of her, right? She's, she is of nature. She's of natural law. So 
there is a way in which coming into wisdom and holding her and stewarding her for the good of all <clears throat> requires alignment inside of yourself it requires self-knowledge when are you when are you leaking that out to get something when are you um reaching out using your magnetism to pull in things that you just want you know when are you putting it in the wrong direction you know there's wrong meaning a direction where it's not welcome or it's going to create harm for yourself or for others right that does not come from a direct relationship to your sexuality necessarily she does have a wisdom in her but she is a wild force so if you imagine her as a, a substance or a nectar or a, or this force it really is how you your whole context around sexuality but around life that's going to hold her guide this force and let you be riding the stallion right like riding her into where you really want to go and into relationships that are healthy and honoring into expressions of her that are not um, going to undercut you in any way or that are coming from an unresolved place in you um, and where you know the things that we practice in the school like homecoming dominion sovereignty returning to poise um, all sorts of things right those are the kinds of things that you want to look to creating inside of your own being how are you how do you return home how do you know when just in general are you outside of yourself or are you with yourself are you in your truth or are you not are you is your discernment active or are you um pushing it away for some reason like those are the things that will help you navigate your sexual current and maintaining energetic psychic safety and integrity more so than and these are living practices living sensibilities inside of you more so than a dogmatic approach from the outside or beliefs about your sexuality that are more conceptual because I'm sure we've all experienced it if you actually get into a situation where your sexuality is moving and opening particularly one that involves another person and chemistry and fire like good luck with the concepts they don't always last very long even if they're from a spiritual place even if they're from a, you know a place of your deepest values it's like we are talking about a living creature essentially and so you being in a living having the capacity to be in a living relationship with her is what's going to help you make good decisions when concept and your values and all the things you thought you would do or never do just fall away because there's something more powerful and something very real moving and it's you and this real thing that's moving and taking you and opening in you and calling you forward to something right that your ability to maintain poise and that to sense into what your discernment is in a very intimate way to um, know what integrity feels like to know what your boundaries feel like though those are all very living things and it's living it's a living cultivation of those things that allows you to cultivate a living relationship with your sexuality that is one of liveness and um, potentially often um, holiness so um, number six if should is in your inner conversation with your sexuality in any way take a pause there is no external right or wrong here that feels like a big statement, but the thing, the point is external. Okay. Sexuality actually has a deep wisdom and a rightness to her. It's the distortions around sexuality that make it go all wrong. And if you stay in touch with her, she will follow the path of integrity and natural law. It's the distortions that create situations where sexuality goes awry it's the distortions and the control so when i say there's no external right or wrong it just means that in the end there's actually not and there doesn't need to be 
you know, and it's very hard to have an external sense of what's right and wrong because female sexuality, and you, we might as well say male, I can't speak to male sexuality, but I'm guessing you could replace he and she and male and female and get a lot from this. Anyway, female sexuality will span, it's going to span the full spectrum in your life in moment by moment months at a time, you're going to go at sometimes from being celibate and quiet and totally uninterested in sexuality to wanting to have a million orgasms to not being able to orgasm to deciding that orgasm is a place of cultivation and, you know, aliveness for you to deciding that you are not going to orgasm, that you're going to just keep all of your sexual energy inside, cycle it, do practices with it. I mean, there are, there, there are so many ways in which your sexuality will express as love, as power, as desire, as gentleness. I mean, there, it's just, it is actually infinite. It comes from an intimate, infinite place. So how can there be an external right or wrong? There cannot be. You are a full spectrum being. And that means like, you know, traditions or places that have a value on the virginal, on the contained, on the, um, you know, what they might call like lifting up practices where you're using, where you're not engaging explicitly sexually in order to move that energy elsewhere. Like there's nothing, they have their time and place as determined by the natural unfoldment of your sexuality. You'll go there when it's time for that and it will be right and it will be, and thank God there are practices for it and that there's a context for it. But then, and there are going to be times, especially if you enter a beautiful union with someone where explicit sexual connection, you know, all the different levels of orgasm and rushes and openings, they are ecstatic and they are, they are the exploration of your connection to God with another, with this right one who's with you. And thank God there are practices for that and context for that. I mean, there's, there just can't be an external right and wrong because we are living creatures and we're going to move through so many different incarnations of ourselves. Our sexuality will have many different expressions of herself. What this says is there is natural law, and I believe strongly that if you listen deeply to your sexual current, your capacity for receptivity, if you marry your sexual power to your heart and your loving, she will not lead you astray. And I think that's the thing. What are the core alignments? What is core to making it so that you don't need an external right and wrong? If you are able to harness and express and be in the power of your sexuality without leaving your heart, without um, losing your discernment, without um, closing down against her or um, to others, to feeling. If you're allowed, essentially, if you can pull, if you can liberate your sexual experience as a woman, from all the distortions that surround it, then she herself is, she is the place where life is created and sustained. She, she does not need any external right and wrong. She knows exactly what to do. She knows when to be quiet. She knows when to be wild. She knows when to open. She knows when to close and protection. There's like, like we're talking about a wild creature. Watch wild creatures. They know what to do. They live in harmony. So th there's a way, this is a return to our inherent harmony on planet Earth. And there's, you know, and, and with all that lives and breathes, sexuality is deeply a part of that. She is not what needs to be controlled and dealt with. And, you know, it's all the distortions that have come around her and all the distortions that just come between you and a willingness to be intimate with yourself. All the ways in which you may believe that you're not enough or you're not right or you're broken or you're wrong or you should be different, should, should, should be different, that's constant. All the, in, all the secret shames, you know, those are what usually need the most kindness and attention. The sexual current, 
you know, th that's where the like, sexual current herself doesn't need our intervention. She will be, she's, she is everything, you know, and sometimes she will be really closed to you. And sometimes she will be really exuberant. Just let her be. See about lending your attention to all the things that are indirectly or directly distorting or uh, cutting you off from just knowing yourself, trusting your own in unfoldment, being willing to be on the pulse of that and follow where she leads. It, what this is is deep trust and what women all over the world right now are seeking to repair at the deepest level is a, an unshakable natural trust in ourselves and how we move how we are, what we bring, how we protect ourselves, all these things. It's There's a deep repair of trust. And that comes from being willing to honor and um, open to your own becoming. All right, just a couple more here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is already kind of long. All right, I'll just... Um, I'm going to skip... The rest because we're already it's already been a long video um you can find it well on my facebook page if you can get there and i'll put it on the website for her mystery school too there's a little bit more um but what i all i really wanted to bring forward to you um is well you know partly i i was kind of called to articulate what how her mystery school holds sexuality and how we hold sexuality as as a mystery that will reveal herself to you if you learn the arts of revelation if you commit to the arts of revelation and you commit to the arts of sovereignty of holding yourself at the same time that you commit to the arts of communion which is opening you know that that there is that we are in a time of rediscovery it requires a huge amount of gentleness and open willingness to come to be intimate with what's real even when it's uncomfortable that you have to come up to the places inside of yourself where you don't trust yourself or you don't know what's right in a moment or you don't know yourself you don't know your values coming up to those places you have to do that first in order to get to the other side of that and so it's like so much gentleness and so much faith like a faith, a deep faith. Faith meaning, who knows? Maybe nobody's ever modeled it to you before. You've never experienced it, but you have faith that there is an innate wholeness and beauty and wild rightness in your sexuality, that she is one with God, that she is a place where you can learn what it is to really be woman, and that nobody, that there is no limit to her expression, and that she's expressing in you right now. If you shed everything else and just come into an intimate, unconditional opening to her, just reveal yourself to me, whatever you're going to show me, what, I, what whatever it is, and make space for her. Let it be a relationship that you are having with your sexual being. And I'll just, the, the final thing that I didn't say is that this thing about having sexuality be in this tiny little explicit box that looks like explicit sexuality is a total disservice and it's going to completely screw up your head around sexuality if you stay there. Sexuality is everything. It's like, it's what you're drawing on to raise your kids after you birth them. And I mean, in all the mundane ways that you do, how do you continue to have energy to make the lunches and get up and like wash the dishes? And it's not, it's not at all always explicitly sexual. It is a continuum of experience, right? So know that she's with you, whether or not you think or culture thinks that something explicitly sexual is going on. She is your destiny. She is your life force. She is your passion, your longing, your creation. And she may or may not ever be explicitly sexual, right? It, that's not what sexuality is. That's not what the female sexual current is. The female sexual current is a current of direct connection to life force. And we draw on that to keep our families together, to birth our visions, to hold our careers, to keep our house houses clean. I mean, we draw on it. We draw on it to heal. We draw on it to hold others. 
Like, be aware that you probably, you may not be honoring her in the way that she's actually showing up. And that's one of the first steps to intimacy with her, is to honor her. Anyway, I hope there was some value in that for you. It was the big thing that came up in the month of communion at her mystery school, which makes some sense because it's we're moving from dominion, which is focused entirely on sovereignty, to how do you move from that place and maintain it while you move into communion with other, with the world, with, you know, so that, it makes sense. It was our sex talk. Um, yeah, so I hope this was of value to you. I hope that you... Um, yeah, I mean, I hope this was of value in the way of validating whatever part of you knows how holy you are and how that no matter what has happened to you and what's happening around you, you are, you do, you wouldn't even be here if the current of Shakti, if the current of, um, life wasn't still with you in all of her beauty and in all of her potential. Yeah, and that, in that, I hope you get whatever support that you need, you know, to just say, I mean, we're here for you, obviously, in whatever ways we are, and the school starts again next fall. It's like the, it is true that finding women, finding holding, finding spaces where you're validated and safe and able to explore, able to express, able to figure out what's where your discernment is, what's right and wrong for you. Like that is those are important things because the overculture at large is not necessarily creating space for that. So Whatever it is, you've got girlfriends, You whatever, we're here for you, but just please hold this as the holy thing that it is. Your sexuality has so, well, has ecstatic sexuality and pleasure in it for you, if that's what it is, if that's what comes, but there's so much in there, and it's such a flame for you, and it's such a, it contains so much of your essence, and so much potential for rapture of all kinds. So I hope you allow her to be that for you. Don't let this world, don't let the distortions, don't let the confusion of the world interfere with your own knowing of what you were actually created to be and the glory of that, the wholeness of that, the beauty of that, and the redemptive power of that. All right, I love you. Blessed be.